Hello and welcome to CryptoCoin.News. Today we have an independent crypto technology expert, chairman of Blockchain Technology Standardization Committee, and the lecturer of Deloitte Academy, Serhi Pondarenko. Thanks for Thank coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. Earlier this year, the National Bank of Ukraine stated that it will introduce electronic hryvnia, which is the local currency, but stated it's not going to be a, a national cryptocurrency. You are the person who has the knowledge in this project. Can you tell what crypto hryvnia is and what is the current stage of its development? Well, there are a number of views on the, what crypto hryvnia should be mm -hmm. and, and how it should work. And as far as I know, the National Bank of Ukraine is investigating these uh, technologies and they are looking for different kind of technologies, not, uh, uh, not uh, necessarily blockchain technologies. As you probably know, there are a number of uh, electronic uh, money platforms existing already in different states and they are not uh, uh, always blockchain-based and cryptocurrency-based. Uh, at the same time, uh, blockchain-based cryptocurrencies, even state-backed, uh, they are uh, looking quite promising from technology point of view. And all uh, best things we know about Bitcoin could, uh, could be some, somehow experienced from uh, national cryptocurrency as well. So it uh, fast transactions, very uh, low cost transactions, it's immutability of uh, register and number other technology features which cryptocurrencies are bringing to us. So uh, uh, there are uh, a number of countries, uh, Ecuador, Tunis, uh, Tunisia, and uh, probably um, Venezuela, they, they already started the, this experimenting with cryptocurrencies, uh, which is issued by, uh, by the National Bank, but still it's, uh, it's, it's experimenting and discovery of new, uh, of new areas of uh, application of this technology. It's novel from, for central banks and uh, they have some fears why uh, they are not going uh, very fast uh, uh, with uh, adoption of this technology. Um, but uh, I believe personally that in five to ten years we'll have only electronic money mm -hmm. worldwide. And because uh, the advantages of this, uh, of crypto technologies are obvious and it's a matter of time when we get rid of papers and <laughs> have uh, pure electronic money. Countries like Norway, Switzerland and even Bank of England have shown interest in central bank digital currencies. Do you see more states that will introduce them? And um, what would be the advantages? Well, I have uh, some sad news probably in this area because, uh, uh, because uh, uh, for now the motivation of states to issue their own uh, uh, currency, national currency in crypto form uh, was uh, getting rid of dollar and getting rid of US sanctions. It's the biggest motivators for them. First was Ecuador, then Venezuela, now Russia. And uh, China is dreaming of, uh, of overcoming the, uh, the dollar. And they even go further. They, uh, they intended to, to turn back to golden standard. So they, uh, they are going to bind uh, again the yuan to gold. And uh, in the, their uh, opinion, they will overcome dollar that way because it, it, it's much more preferable uh, currency. Uh, among others, and uh, to say uh, to say more, um, uh, public bank of China, as far as I know, central bank of China, is uh, they have uh, quite progressive views on uh, national cryptocurrency. For example, uh, it's the only bank who stated that um, privacy should be part of design of national cryptocurrency. So now we have a lot of cash uh, running in the market, and there is a great demand of of privacy. If we, if we go completely to open ledgers and open money and every transaction is, is uh, uh, reviewed by anyone, uh, probably is not a preferable solution for, major, for majority of users. And uh, keeping uh, that big amount of cash on the local Ukrainian market uh, means that there is a, a big uh, demand for, uh, for privacy. And uh, that's a very important thing to consider. If, if we take uh, completely privacy from people, it's, it's not acceptable for them. They, they will not accept and they will continue to use paper money or even gold money. Do you think there is a need for a centralized, nationally backed currency? I believe in a world with multiple currencies, 
with no uh, centrally issued uh, currency by central banks. We just need to have uh, like money constitution and let everyone to issue their own currency. And uh, after that, what, what we have now, we have monopoly of central bank and they forced us to use that kind of uh, currency and that's it. And uh, like, we, uh, like we see in other situations in economy, we're fighting monopoly. Why? Because a monopolist will bring uh, poor quality of product with high price and you have no alternatives. You have also announced Doc Census, which is a blockchain document verification system. Can you describe it to us? What we decided to, to try to experiment is to issue electronic, uh, which is legally meaningful document, and put it uh, directly in blockchain, in uh, record into block, because it's immutable storage of, of that kind of document. You could not that easy to falsify and to manipulate with this uh, document. And we started with power of attorneys when Deloitte um, granted uh, some function or some capability to his employer, employee or a partner. We are issuing a document which is power of attorney. Uh, for example, me is allowed to, to do certain things in the name of Deloitte and to represent, represent uh, their, uh, their firm in, in that deal. So that's it, and we realized it. it, it it's a small um, uh, piloting project, which is still working uh, within Deloitte, in, inside Deloitte. And uh, yes, we are thinking about second version, which is uh, scalable and uh, available to everyone. Ukraine has a strong IT industry and seems to be at the forefront of many interesting crypto initiatives. Can you share some of them with us today? Share with them, it's a lot of things which are developed in, in Ukraine and, and still is growing. What uh, personally impressed me uh, a lot uh, for, for, recent, uh, for recent year, uh, it's uh, Remy. It's a very successful startup and ICO. They raised 20 million bucks on that. And they, they're developing technology of passwordless authentication. It's, um, it's a big headache for, uh, for all security, of, of computer security, having password as a, as a mean of authorization. Uh, because people are not capable to uh, remember complex uh, passwords, uh, they are not capable to remember random, uh, randomly designed passwords, and uh, there are a lot of vocabularies to, uh, to hug them easily, and uh, uh, computer power is growing. So, uh, average notebook uh, for a couple months, uh, could, through brute force attack, uh, could, uh, uh, could substitute any, almost any password. So, it's a strong security risk and there are uh, predictions that in uh, two, three years we'll get reading of uh, passwords uh, at all in any system. So, and another trend is uh, that audit, uh, uh, authorization feature is going to platforms. It's not uh, integrated capability to each application. So uh, that's uh, one thing which is impressing me. Another thing is uh, Romad. Uh, it's a very early uh, group of researchers who developed uh, their uh, uh, the, uh, new approach to uh, fight, anti uh, fight of, uh, computer viruses. Uh, so the uh, current situation is that viruses are, are, are fight with uh, antivirus software and software is updated in two, three days after the new uh, vulnerability has been exploited. And in this uh, period, all users are vulnerable for, for this new virus and uh, attackers uh, have very strong economy under that. What these guys from, from Dnieper, what they do, they studied genetics. So they, uh, they researched that all these viruses are coming to 50 families of uh, viruses. And the uh, resident software, which is sitting in your computer, could easily detect uh, what is happening with uh, any system call. Then they have artificial intelligence uh, in the cloud who has learned to, uh, to find this uh, uh, not, not normal behavior of computer and fight the virus immediately when it appeared, not two, three days delay. Uh, nothing, and they are going to charge you only in case if they uh, uh, definitely catch the virus in your computer. The rest of, uh, of time it is working for free. Ideally, blockchain technology is transparent, immutable and decentralized. Do you see it can create some issues with corrupted governments and businesses? 
definitely it uh, fights corruption uh, and um, but but again it's uh, not about technology it's about of changing the rules of the game and uh, let's put it this way to create a new forms of games because currently we are in in game process with our government it was uh, spontaneously formed but now we could uh, design it to a new way when we use all features of, uh, of decentralized systems and uh, be prepared that we, uh, we will be more and more involved in governing different processes in the nation. If old um, approach was that we are selecting best people, putting them into governance and let them do everything. So this uh, doesn't work anymore. Everyone should uh, take and, and carry responsibility for certain area of, of management and maybe in future we'll vote uh, faster and, and, and more often with uh, a digital device for, uh, for making decision on uh, exchange rate of our national currency, for example, or whatever other important questions for, for the whole nation or the, the local community. How do you see blockchain technology evolving and what will be the future of this industry? Well, if you know, uh, Gartner is issuing a uh, hype cycle prediction and uh, uh, past two years was uh, for blockchain technology, it was on top of uh, expectations, which is not uh, obviously not realized very fast. So now blockchain is coming to uh, Mm, too deep because uh, we are very slow in implementing these technologies. In 2016, uh, it, it was produced a lot of pr proof of concept and views on how we could use blockchain. Everyone was inspired. It was like a first love with uh, blockchain with the whole world. But now it's, 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 it's becoming more practical and more... Uh, <laughs> More, more obvious that uh, we have no uh, enough uh, specialists to, to deploy all this. <laughs> we have no uh, enough uh, time to, uh, to research very complex things in new areas we, we never uh, were before. Many abstract challenges, uh, many uh, regulation uncertainty, and many things which are uh, slowing the progress of implementation of, uh, of blockchain. But on, uh, on the other hand, it's a very useful thing because um, only strongest projects will survive, only useful use cases and really demanded use cases will, uh, will, will play and will uh, grow. And uh, I, I just believe that uh, it, it will need to come through this through three to five years period and then, uh, then we'll see a lot of uh, like enterprise scale or nation scale or uh, like uh, uh, big scale solutions which are working, which are available for everyone, which are secure and which are clean how to use them. So I believe that the future of blockchain development is bright. We have uh, still uh, a big inspiration worldwide. Uh, top managers uh, like me from, from traditional business are coming to crypto business. It's uh, worldwide again uh, happening. So I believe it's better, better minds and uh, better money are coming to a new, uh, new economy and new brightening uh, future which blockchain bring, will bring to us. Thank you, Serhi, for the conversation. Thank you very much. Today we were joined by Serhi Bondarenko, uh, the independent crypto expert and chairman of Blockchain Technology Standardization Committee and as well the lecturer at Deloitte Academy. Thanks for watching and see you next time.